Okay, now I'm going to take some qu uh, questions from the audience. And uh, the questions are coming mostly from my kids. And let me see if I can um, try to explain two things that they asked me. One, um, I, there's a thing called graphs. And I have been use I use them all the time. And this is one I, I didn't know that 13-year-olds um, didn't know. But... I found out that it's it's new to them, and a, a graph is um, always a. This is the x-axis, and here this is kind of important to remember, and this is the y-axis, and an axis means you know an upgoing line or an outgoing line. Try to remember, just kind of burn this into your head that x is this direction and y is this direction, because that'll that'll always help you, and then z. Is a third dimension that jumps out of the out of the board, but that's kind of complicated. But it, x goes this way, y goes this way, and z jumps out this way. And the reason that you want to do this and remember x and y is that when you're when you're putting data into a graph, you'll say something like one comma two, and that is a way of saying of finding a particular point on the graph. Now these are all units of one. And so you go, you say, okay, what, what is a one, two? And you always go X, Y. X is always first and Y is always second, just like in the alphabet. So you go to the one spot for X, okay, this is one, and you go to the two spot for Y, and you would draw this exactly here. So this would be one, two, one X and two Ys. And so similarly, you could have a three or a, a two, three, and now we're going to go 2 over an x and 3 up in y. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. And so we're, these are called coordinates. And we're, these, this is called plotting. So we are taking coordinates and we are plotting them. We're, we're putting dots on a, screen, on a, on a grid. So um, now I'm doing this fast. And uh, you know, we, it, it just is that process of what you do is you could say here for example this would be um, like it, we're going to do an example about temperature versus radiation and I'll, I'll erase these because I, I did something a couple a couple um, videos ago that kind of blew my son back and what we're saying here is that as temperature goes up this way, then radiation goes this way. So let's assume that we've got really high temperature, but no radiation. That would be out here. Big temperature, maybe the temp, let's say that I'm drawing that way, way out there, 10 temperature and one radiation. So it's way the heck out here. And similarly, you could go 110, so X is here. This would be temperature because now we've actually renamed it. And that would be way up here. So 110, low temperature, lots of radiation, or high temperature, no radiation. Um, I, I don't know. I, this is one of the things I really can't figure out how to explain it better. So I'm just kind of throwing it out. And I'm, gonna, I'm now going to jump into the problem that my, my son had is every time... In engineering, all the equations, I was always saying like 550 pounds per foot per second is equal to one horsepower, okay? And he was following and following and following, and there was always a different pounds, foot, second. And he, okay, that made sense, and miles per hour, miles per hour, you know, like, 60 miles per hour. So there's always a different unit. Okay, miles, hours. And that, I was just going along, going along. And then when we got to radiation, and I talked about thermal radiation, I said that it goes up by T to the fourth. And so I looked at that, and then I said, that's equal to T times T times T times T. And that was, <laughs> whoa, how did you do that? How come... That I've never seen that before. I've never seen 
four T's in a row. And I said, okay, I've got to go and try to explain that. So let's go back to our graph, which we just did. And let's do the same thing, temperature here and radiation here. This was, this was in the, the video called Resistance Heating. It was, I, I was talking about when you get a little filament really, really hot in a, in a resistance heater, it just shoots out this thing called radiation, which is like sunlight. And just, it doesn't go through the air. It just shoots through it and heats the person up real well. So what you would do, what mechanic or what yeah, what mechanical engineers do is they go take a resistance heater and they get a graph of what happens and they go, this graph goes like this. Let me draw these dots better. Okay? So the, they they take actual data in the field, actually go out, measure it, see what it says, and and then plot it. This is a you know plot. We, we go and we fit all these things together, and this is a this is a very fast rise. And so, what what we would do is we first of all try to see if temperature, if radiation were equal to temperature, right? And we, so we'd go like this and go, okay, they're equal, they're equal, they're equal, they're weak, equal. Well, that's not quite equal. Let me try that better. Equal, equal, equal. So as temperature goes up, radiation exactly the same. So we would try this, we would try the math and go, no, that does not fit. That is not what's happening here. So, we, okay, let's try this. Radiation is equal to T squared. So now we have two T's. And we go, okay, 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 looking good, looking good, looking good. No, it doesn't fit. We've got to get, we've got to get some equation to line up with these dots. Okay, let's try R equals T3. God, this has got to be it. This has got to be it. So it takes off and it goes like this. Nope, doesn't fit. So this is T to the third, T to the second, T doesn't fit. All of a sudden, you get, you're get you going along, you're, you're trying to figure out what fits, and you go R equals T to the fourth, and it just perfectly lays right on top of it. And you say, that's it. We We didn't, we have no way of figuring out why it's t to the fourth well i mean you kind of dig deeper but your measurements in the field happen to line up with perfectly with t to the fourth they so the engineering books publish this and i blindly use the numbers because now i've been told i've been taught that radiation which is like sunlight that jumps through vacuums operates at acts to, acts like it's t to the fourth and so when you think about it if you multiply a big number four times the, at times itself, you get a massive number. So what this is saying is that down here you've got regular heat, maybe parabolic you know, convection and, and conduction, but whew, the bigger that temperature goes, it goes flying up. And so that that is the basis of radiant heating: is that if you get your element hot, then you're going to get really high radiations really fast. And so that is where T to the fourth comes. And we can, in engineering, we can actually multiply things that are the same. And even though it's weird, it just happens to fit the equation, T to the fourth. And um, I, I just, <laughs> I, I, I've got to tell my son, it's not, it's weird, but it's just the way the curve fits. And uh, it comes from data. And um, this is, how we put together all engineering is we take measurements and try to see what what equations fit so that that's my question and answer of of the day